Hello everyone, my name is Annette and this is Chemistry at Glance. So, all of the equations so far were Unit 1 equations. Now we're going into the Unit 2 equations. And we're starting off with the enthalpy change. Enthalpy change. So, in your Unit 2 um, chemist AS chemistry, you get these two equations, Q equals MC change in T. Actually, you don't get them. You have to remember them off by heart. And that's your enthalpy change. So what we're aiming for is to calculate your enthalpy change indirectly. So let's explain um, these equations first. So Q is your heat transferred. M is your mass, but is the mass of solution. Not the solid, that's the mass of the solution. C is your um, specific heat capacity. And it's a constant, 4.18. And lastly, your change in temperature. Um, and then... As you can see, this equation uses our Q, so heat transferred, which we calculated from this. So we, in order to find your enthalpy change, you have to do this equation first to get Q. So minus Q is still the heat transferred, but you put a minus in front of the answer you get here. And that's just the number of moles. And that's your enthalpy change. Okay. So, we know all of these now. Um, oh, one last thing you need to remember is that number of moles, this has to be of the limiting reagent. So, um, you may get two different uh, reagents, but the number of moles that you have to find is from the limiting one. Limiting one means that one that will um, end first. So not the one in the excess, which there's a lot of, the one that will run out first. Mm, okay, I think the, the best thing to do is uh, work for an example. Here's a question. So combustion at 1.6 grams of C2H5OH raised the temperature of 150 grams of water from 22 degrees Celsius to um, 71 degrees Celsius. And now we're asked to find the uh, enthalpy change of combustion of ethanol. So if you got this type of question, how would you know you have to use this equation? Uh, so first of all, there's not many equations in your unit two exam. Second of all, you get the temperature change, you get grams, you're asked to find the change in um, the enthalpy change. So, uh, oh, the last thing I should tell you, change in temperature. Why didn't I say which unit it should be, Kelvin or degrees Celsius? This is because if you have a change in degrees Kelvin, the change will be exactly the same as it would be in degrees Celsius. So if you had 273 uh, degrees Kelvin going to 298 degrees Kelvin, uh, Kelvin that would be difference of 25 Kelvin. If you go from 0 degrees Celsius to 25 degrees Celsius, that would still be 20 degrees, 25 degrees Celsius difference. So the difference is the same no matter if you would use Kelvin or degrees Celsius. So you're asked to find change in H, but do we have our heat transferred minus Q? No. So we have to find Q first, which is M, C, change in T. You don't get these on your data booklet, so you have to know them off by heart. So mass is the mass of solution. So, um, the mass we use is the 150 grams of water plus our 1.6 grams of C2H5OH. Why do I not only use 150 or 1.6 grams? Because we have to find the mass of total. 
so the total, so adding them up. So it's going to be 151.6. We multiply it by our C, and C is the specific heat capacity, so always 4.18. And then you multiply it by your change in temperature. And the change in temperature is 71 degrees Celsius minus 22 degrees Celsius, which gives you 49 degrees Celsius. You put all of this into your calculator to get 31050.71 as your heat transferred. The next step you take is to find the enthalpy change. Enthalpy change is the minus Q over N. Okay, so we have a Q, we put a minus in front, so it's minus 31050.71 and N. Do we know the N? Um, no, we don't. So we have to calculate it. We have the mass, but now which mass do we use? As I told you before, we use the mass of the uh, number of moles of the limiting reagent. Um, as you can see, we have more water than we have our ethanol. Therefore, ethanol will be our um, limiting reagent. So N equals mass over MR. Mass of ethanol is 1.6. The MR of meth ethanol is 46.06. And the number of moles works out to be 0 0.0347. Now that we have number of moles, we can put it back into our equation. And your final answer is minus 8948333.14 joules. This number is very big. And because it's very big, in your exam, you are usually asked to show your answer in kilojoules, not joules. In order to um, find kilojoules from joules, you need to divide your answer by a thousand. And what you get is minus 894.83 kilojoules. And this is your final answer. So this is a tricky um, equation. So I thought I'll do another example. So addition of zinc powder to 50, 55 uh, centimeters cubed of aqueous copper to sulfate at 22.8 degrees Celsius, raise the temperature to 32.3 degrees Celsius. 0.3175 grams of copper was obtained. And now we're asked to calculate the enthalpy change for this reaction. Again, you have changes in temperature, you have grams, you have, um, you're told to you want to find the enthalpy change, so you straight away know you have to use this equation. And then this one. Let's start with finding the Q because we'll need it for this reaction. So our mass, remember, this is the mass of the solution, not the mass of the copper that was obtained. So the mass of the solution is 55. You can leave it as centimeters cubed, that's not a problem. It stays 55. Um, C is 4.18 constant and then change in temperature 35.3 minus 22.8 which gives you 9.5. So your Q is 2184.05 joules. If you got Q we can now find the enthalpy change so it's minus the answer you got divided by the number of moles. And now we have to find the number of moles. So the only mass we are given is this mass. So you straight away know you'd have to use it. So number of moles you calculate by doing mass over MR. Your mass is not 0.3175. The MR of um, copper copper itself you'll find on your periodic table you have copper right here so the MR is 63.5 and the answer to this is 5 times 10 to the minus 3. Now you can use it in your equation to find your enthalpy change and what you get is minus 436810. Again um, this is a 
very uh, long number. So what you do is divide it by 1000 to get minus 436.81 kilojoules or minus 1. Um, I don't want you to be confused, therefore I went back to the previous question. Um, I forgot to add the, um, the mole minus 1 onto here. 